Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be giving you a bit of an update on how everything has been going with Somerset as far as the Easy Sort is concerned. Now this isn't a build video so a bit of a disclaimer out there. I'm just going to show you what I've been using, show you the end results of basically what I've been testing over the last few weeks and of course where we are at the moment. Now these are quite possibly still subject to change. The original setup still works just fine in Somerset at the moment with a couple of alterations but just remember that there are still a week or so or a couple of weeks of testing still to go so things could change change quite dramatically so don't set this in stone at the moment but a few people in the live streams have been asking to kind of recap over what I've been doing and where the easy sort stands at the moment so I'm going to show you what I've been going over now the original setup if you're used to it already or if you're not there is a link in the video um, for those that aren't you will know that of course uh, Netch and Spider Cutters has been the overall setup for the build and of course one keener as well meaning that we take full advantage of our lights our heavies our lightning damage and of course our spell damage because it all contributed to one factor meaning our main heavies and lights and stuff like that however with the somerset changes so far they've made it so that your max resources also benefits your light and heavies quite a lot as well in comparison to just your spell damage so you don't have to have loads and loads of spell damage for your lights and heavies anymore because that was obviously a main factor now they both benefit spell damage and max magicka so you can work off your main resource and drop your spell damage a little bit with that in mind i've used a couple of different sets that i wouldn't normally use one was actually in the very very early stage of the original video but the other is something that i've been messing with for a long time but never been able to because the jewelry was in robust so we'd lose out however now that you can do uh changes to your jewelry you can change from arcane to infused or bloodthirsty or even healthy or whatever you want you can change it completely so now this made the set that i liked a lot more viable for this particular setup now what i'm using is undaunted infiltrate and i know this is a medium set so if you put it on your body obviously you won't get the light armor bonuses which was the problem before it has magical bonuses which is nice it has a weapon crit which is useless but then it has a five piece that i really wanted to take advantage of however since staves are now two pieces this is two bits done already going to jewelry these used to be robust but i've changed them to bloodthirsty to give me a little bit more execute power and to infuse as well to give me more spell damage so these are no longer robust so they do actually benefit now which is really really nice now of course these are still subject to change i'm still tweaking it i'll still mess with it and these aren't necessarily what the traits are exactly going to be however this gives you kind of a little bit of an insight as to how you can make a medium set turn into effectively a light set so now what this does is when you use an ability that costs magicka which we do all the time your light and heavy attacks deal more damage. Now, obviously, if you're familiar with the Easy Sork already, anything caught in that wall of elements due to the Maelstrom weapon will also increase your light and heavy attacks. So they stack. Now, if you look in my uh, buff counter at the bottom there, I use a shield, and look, Undaunted Infiltrator is on now. Use another shield, on again. My heavies and lights are going to be active and stronger all the time. So, alongside that is Infallible Aether which I used in my first ever Easy Sork setup. Now, you don't have to have this, of course, if you don't do trials, it's going to be difficult. But if you do normal trials, you can still pick this stuff up. You can upgrade it to whatever level you want, whether it be uh, purple or gold or whatever. And, of course, if you're using the jewelry instead and you have a couple of pieces of medium or whatever anywhere else, you can still get away with it. But just know, again, this is made for ease of use. So if you do normal trials, you don't have to mess around getting the jewelry and upgrading it and everything to try and get the gold shiny stuff for infallible ether in fact you just put the body pieces on body pieces are a lot lot easier to gain a lot easier to get access to and most people just dump it anyway so you can pick it up for free failing that julianus also works it's just a little less effective now basically this again when your heavy attack is finished there is a bit of a burst at the end so you get additional damage to the end tick of your heavy attack so that further boosts your dps as well plus it applies minor vulnerability all the time meaning you don't have to just rely on a status effect from lightning this will always be up Grofdar is on the head and shoulders because, of course, we can now use a full monster piece, uh, monster set rather. This does do flame damage, but it does um, tick over time. It does benefit from our CPs the way they are, and it does actually do quite a lot of damage. Now, for myself, I like to play the Easy Sork up close because of his Boundless uh, Storms, which does a lot of damage. It can execute, and you can also heal off it if you're using Crit Search. If you're using Crit Search, you don't have to. Um, failing that, you can also switch to Valken Scroll, which I've tested quite rigorously as well, and 
that will actually perform very, very closely. It'll give you a little bit of extra health, it will proc every five seconds, almost guaranteed, so you will have that constant damage from range as well. So you've got a couple of options there, but the main thing for this, of course, is the fact that it's got max magic, so that will, control, that will contribute to our light and heavies more often. Now, the combination of them all together, the rotation's exactly the same as before. Like I said, this isn't a set build as such. This is the Easy Sork in its current state in Somerset, just for now. Things may still change, but I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like. Previously on live, I mean, it was hitting sort of on a dummy. We know they're not consistent. We know they do break. And we also know that they don't have a constant 25% uptime and off balance if you're solo. That can fluctuate. So damage will be altered up and down across the, across the board. But... On average, if you've got a good rotation run, you can hit 32 consistently. And then, of course, your area of effect damage is absolutely nuts. And it's very, very easy to use. That's the whole point of the build is to be um, self-sustainable as far as your survivability, your damage is concerned, and, of course, your resources. And just be an all-round uh, viable setup for all content for all players of all skill levels. However... With certain changes and with this as well, it's actually a bit stronger. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration here. Just for the record, if you don't have, you don't need early drain because your sustain's covered with your heavy. So you quickly put on susceptibility, which will continue no matter how long you're fighting, as long as you're doing damage. So that'll stay up all the time. Let's get started with this. You can see the heavy ticks when they crit are huge. If I can get an off-balance tick, which I can't. There we go. 18.5. This is solo as well. So it's just a, a debuff, which would be the same as a taunt or an Ellie drain. So I'll leave that running. My crits aren't so lucky this time. I'm using the Fee from Understone, as always, because we want to make sure we do get those crits on those heavies. The heavies are massive if you spec for them. So you have to keep on top of that. If you go lover, you're going to drop so much crit chance that although you may be going through the resist a little bit more you're not going to get those big crits all the time look at that 18.5 18.5 18.5 you want those it's the whole point of the setup take advantage of it now obviously with buffs and everything like that this looks a lot lot shinier but you can see how it's a very simple very easy to use setup my buffs are up all the time my damage is consistent my sustain is covered with no early drain whatsoever don't need it now you can use crit surge of course i'd replace that with um, inner light on the back bar unless you're comfortable using potions that's up to you and execute is nuts by the way nice and easy as you can see nice comfy 36.5 which is absolutely awesome we did test this in the dungeons on Somerset during the live stream and obviously the dummy fluctuates quite a lot as you can see here, um, the highest heavy attack was actually 18.5, but if you do that during execute, it goes up to about 30. I'm using the Thief Mundestone, of course, not using the Lover to cheese it, so that will go up to a 40 if you put the Lover on, if you were lucky enough to get your crits, but we're not messing with that. We're going to do a proper, proper test with the flat bonuses that we would actually use. Um, also consider this here, um, where are we? Off balance is only up 18% of the time. That should be up 25% of the time. So there's more damage to come out of it. You can get this 37, 38 if you get lucky sh lucky hits. Um, also, off balance didn't apply straight away, which it usually does. Again, you get more burst when you start. Same goes for normal fights as well. But like I said, we did test this away from the dummy on the live stream. So if you were lucky enough to see that, then of course your jaw dropped. But if not, um, I think it was, I think it was last week, maybe Monday last week. So week three of PTS, maybe 4.0.3 which we tested on White Gold Tower, and the first boss, this was topping out at 57k DPS, which was really, really nice. Of course, that target can go off balance all the time, but even on Kino, absolutely tore apart. Very, very simple to use. Um, all the hard work's kind of done for you. If you're familiar with Easy Sork already, you will know that. But no change to the rotation so far, just a change to CPs and gear. Like I said, the... Um, the Netch and the Spider Cot still works just fine alongside Grofda, but it's a little bit less as far as damage is concerned. But it's not far off what it was in the first place. So hopefully that kind of helps you out a little bit. I know some people are a bit skeptical about it, not sure whether it was still going to work as it did before, or not sure whether any sets were going to change, anything like that. Like I said, sets may change to this, or they might not. So don't panic. Um, what you're using now, first of all, does still work. And secondly, there are still going to be some changes coming to Somerset, which may affect this. 
But for those of you that asked, as there's been a lot of you, I've had a lot of comments lately saying, how's Easy Sork doing? How have you got so far? Um, is it still doing the same damage? Does it do more? Is it still sustainable? Yes, it's absolutely fine so far. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that uh, stops a little bit of the panic out there and maybe raises a little bit of hype as to what we could potentially see for the Easy Sork in the upcoming patch. Okay, so hopefully that helped. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. Um, hopefully you now have kind of a better understanding of what I've been messing with. I won't go over all the details of all the different possibilities I've gone through because, to be honest, it's it's countless. There's far too much work being put in. But um, rest assured, I'm on it. Same with the rest of the builds as well. There's lots and lots of stuff happening behind the scenes that you don't see on the live stream. So all of the upcoming builds are being worked on. And, of course, if anything does change, they'll be worked on some more before I release the builds. So, once again, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you're not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, the website where all the guides are, zynodegaming.com. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.